Yes, sir. Another episode of R.A.O.P. We back. All right, so we got a special guest. I'll let you introduce yourself, man. Um, I go by the name of Boy Van. I am a producer and independent recording artist. Okay. Talk to him. <laughs> so you just consider yourself a producer first, in general, even though you make music? Nah, I think... Um, it's it's about both equally because as long as I've made beats like I've recorded my own songs and stuff like that, but I think like the producing thing kind of just took off way before like the artist stuff started picking up traction and shit. So it's kind of just I always introduce myself as that first because it's like that's just how I started, you know. Okay, yeah, I just asked that because I had seen. I'm pretty sure everybody's seen the Kanye documentary. Oh yeah, bro. Honestly, all that shit he went through, still going through it. <laughs> Been there, so. Same shit. Yeah, I just asked that because I seen the Kanye documentary and like most people, they consider like Kanye a producer that raps. Yeah. And he gets offended by that. He want to be called a, a rapper that just happened to produce and shit like that. So that kind of threw me off guard. So I was, that's why I asked you, what do you consider yourself? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, not to like make it any deeper than what it is. I just consider myself just to be an artist in general because okay. like. I do everything, music, graphic design, like, you know what I mean? Okay. Video yeah. editing and shit, too, so. Yeah. You do your own graphic design? Sometimes. Everything? Yeah, sometimes. Um, If I don't do it myself, I tend to, like, oversee it a lot, like, on a creative direction, too. Okay. Gotcha. 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 That's what's up. How long you been doing music? 12 years. 12 years. 12 years. It started, like, I was, um, I did marching band. Didn't even want to do it. My mom was like, you got to go do some shit or, you know. So I picked something because I didn't want to play sports. And then um, I just realized, oh, I really like music, playing music, being around music and stuff like that. And then um, I got to high school, taught myself how to make beats because I wanted to rap, really. Like, that's how I got started. So I figured <laughs> if I learn how to make beats and record myself, I won't have to pay, like, hella money, you know what I'm saying, to have somebody else do it. I just do it myself. And mm -hmm. I can make money by doing it for other people. So I was just thinking long term. Yeah, you just cut all the middleman out. Once you learn how to yeah. do everything, you pretty much got yeah, it. From set. the sounds of it, he done cut every middleman. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part, trying to figure out how to cut the label out. I heard you know? <laughs> so, and who are you signed to? Uh, I'm not signed right now. Okay, I'm okay. Um, I was signed for two years to a British label called Dirty Hit. Gotcha. Um, they have acts like I don't know if you ever heard of 1975. It's like a super big band. Um, they have yeah, Dan Diva Doobie. Uh, a lot of like indie alternative acts or whatever. Um, and then I thought it was a good fit at the time just because like a lot of the music I make is like it's a mix of like rock and like rap stuff. So, you know. So, yeah, I was going to ask about that. Um, you say you originally wanted to rap. When do you feel like you made that transition to kind of making more rock music? Um, I want to say like two and a half years ago because... I like I grew up listening to rock music as much as I listened to like rap and hip hop, but I never imagined that like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna go like try, you know, what I'm saying doing some of this shit like playing guitars or like singing in that vocal style. Right. It's like two years ago. I was on this binge of just making like 30, 35 songs a month. And I just got bored like out of nowhere what I was making. So this kid uh, named Michael, he came in my Twitch stream. She was like, yo, let me sing you some shit. I'm like, OK, cool. It was a bunch of like grungy ass guitars. So I started, I tried recording the one just for the hell of it. And then I was like, oh, this actually sounds like decent. So I just took it and ran with it. Um, and it kind of came full circle for me just because like I always knew that was in me, but I didn't know it was in me like that. So that, that like degree, I guess. So inspirations who are some of your, your, your inspirations give us hip hop and uh, rock? Um, I think on a hip hop tip, you got like, I'll say Kanye, obviously, um, Drake, of course, and honestly, Childish Gambino. Um, I think the three of them really kind of shifted the paradigm as far as like rap goes and what like the image of a rapper is supposed to be. Cause, um, they kind of came up, especially Kanye, like he came out at a time where like gangster rapper, like being fucking hard and from the streets and shit was like the only meta for being a rapper. So he kind of changed that. Um, I think as far as rock goes, I'd say uh, Paramore, obviously. I think Haley Williams is one of the greatest songwriters of all time. And then Chester Bennington. One of the best singers also. For sure. Yeah, For absolutely, sure. bro. Like, sure. 
Uh, she's one of those artists. She'll write something. It's like can't, it's hard to sing along to sometimes because it's like a regular person not doing some of that <laughs> right, shit. Right, like right. <laughs> that's some real shit. And then uh, Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park. Uh, rest mm. in peace. Yeah, rest in peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Legend. Bro, uh, he, huge legend, man. His influence is strong. Bro, yeah, and it's is it's crazy. There I, there hasn't been another vocalist like him. You nah, know, at least as far as I'm concerned. You got a good point. <laughs> um, yeah, he was fucking crazy though. Lincoln Park was probably um my intro to rock, honestly. I was just about to say that I feel like most black people that intro into rock is probably Lincoln Park. Bro, on God, you know tap, what's they crazy? They tapped into both markets. Yeah. This. It's so crazy because uh I wish I could say that. Like Lincoln Park is something you could pride yourself on. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you could be like, yo, I grew up on Lincoln Park. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and I I definitely listen to them, you know what I'm saying? But my my introduction was fucking Lump Biscuit. That's not a bad one. <laughs> it's not a, it's not a bad, bad one. And it, it, it one. especially when he was prevalent. You know what I mean? I just feel like his decline, you know what I mean? Like makes oh, it like, yeah, yeah no, it's, like, it's one legacy. of the lesser. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. I think I think Limp Biscuit is from here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He is, okay, he is. Okay. And that's, you know, so it's like a bittersweet thing in that regard. It's like, okay, I was in Pensacola, so it was like, yo, I listened to a nigga from Jax, you know what I mean? Like yeah. a dude from Jax before I moved here and I was a fan, you know what I mean? Like, it was cool to get into rock through that, you know? Uh, but like looking back, there were so many like great rock acts out at that time, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a that's a good thing though about like music, music just art in general. Yeah, you can just go back. If you miss something, like it'll be there. Yeah. Um. Who Who was it? Oh, Blink One Eighty Two. Right. That's they like that's some. one popularized man. Mm-hmm. I swear to God, didn't listen to like Blink for real mm-hmm. until like three years ago. Blink has some sleep, like some sleepers. They did. It was it was crazy because um, I think like how big they were. I would say like they were like kind of the Drake of like the pop punk shit right for a long time yeah like i think they were one of the first ones to really get it popping like obviously you know like all the small things and shit like that but i never dug into like their catalog right probably because i found like the four or five bands i really liked and just listened to them right i was like i don't really need shit else it's funny that you even mentioned uh like you compared them to Drake because as I as I said uh for a long time I was thinking about it and I was like I think Blink 182 only had the rock game on lock for like a good solid 3 or 4 years I think by the 4th year they started to like relinquish that that hold but um it's crazy to think of how long time felt back then you know yeah. what I mean like Blink 182 felt like a decade yeah, I feel that. Yeah, ninety eight yeah. degrees, shit like that. That shit felt like a decade. Like it felt like they were hot forever. You know what I mean? Um, but now we look at it and acts turn over. As I think about rock acts, even um, I was listening to uh, Panic at the Dis- uh, Panic at the Disco earlier. Fucking love Panic. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was one of the few bands I was really like spinning all the time. Um, yeah, like that fucking first album was crazy. It was. It was. And I feel like after that first album, they kind of like recessed more or less to like the under, not, I mean, what we would call the underground, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, weren't as big, but. I think the rock market, it's interesting, right? Like to look at in comparison to just like rap and hip hop, because it's like, um, like when you hit and rock, it's like, bro, like your one song or your one album could carry you. Yeah, literally your entire career. Like another band, uh, The Killers, mm. bro. Like Mr. Brightside yeah. is still on the radio. Right, you know what I'm right, saying? Like right. Hot Flesh. Like I still play that album yeah. like all the way through, and it, it's just um, it's crazy that like those acts don't necessarily have to like keep up or put out an album like every year and stuff like that because it just the way I guess the way it works over there like it just holds longer. Right. Versus like with rap, it's soup. I think what it is is, is the competition aspect i don't think rock is like as competitive as like rapper hip-hop is to me yeah, anyway just no other up. genre is yeah i don't think any rap. anything they don't give a fuck at at all. All. yeah hip-hop yeah. one of the few like genres where you if you make if you're doing it still when you're 50 you get laughed at and shit like that. yeah rock, you can do rock music forever 
The same, any any yeah, other genre. Any other much. genre. Yeah. Blues, country, you know what I mean? R&B. All of that shit. Like, I love country music, man. And they sing they sing till they dead. You know what I mean? Nah, that's facts. <laughs> Not too big of a fan of, the, of country. But I think it's more so just because I haven't found, like, my... Country oh, artists man. that I really fuck with. You want to put me on, send me a playlist or something. I, I I'm trying you. to figure it out. I got you. I got you. I got some. Um, damn man, I got some shit on my shirt. <laughs> 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 um, I got some records in the back, man. Some uh, Ray Charles singing country. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I got a couple albums. He ain't believe me at first, but that shit sound crazy. I got two vinyls <laughs> of uh, Ray Charles singing country, man. You won't get. You won't have a hoedown. <laughs> 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 is it like covers or is it like original Ray Charles like on his Keith Urban shit? I want to say it's a mix. It's a mix. I think he wrote like a few country records, but I think he was mostly singing covers. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's probably lit then. Um, They used to do that a lot back in like Motown, you know what I'm saying? The oldie days. Like everybody mm-hmm. was covering each other's songs, going crazy. Yep. Uh, It's crazy to think the songwriting, uh, the law for songwriting, if I'm not mistaken, was uh I'm doing this shit off the top of my head on the fly, but I if if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it wasn't passed until like seventy two, oh, and it might even been later than that. But I know that up until seventy two, you could you could free range sing anything that came out, anything that you heard. So to me, oh go ahead, no no I'm sorry. To me, that's just is 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 mind blowing because you think about how big swing music was, right? Um. Even jazz and blues up to that point, you know what I mean? You have a lot of classic records that are still uh played today. Oh, it ain't got no uh it ain't no thing if it ain't got that swing, whatever. You oh, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, do up, yeah. do up, do up. But shit like that, you could sing a hundred times over, you know what I mean, and reap the same benefits. That's why I love Cadillac Records where they showed um I forget his name now. Uh he was riding with Muddy Waters, um his oh, homie, his little homie. I, when, I can't uh, even think of his name. When he uh, shot old boy that was impersonating him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought that was a, a, a important scene, you know what I mean, to add to the movie. So, yeah. I mean, that shit was uh, super prominent. But I mean, it still happens now. But I think back then it was Wild, Wild way West. crazier because the, there was no law for it. You know what I mean? Like you had like all types of acts. You had like. Like El- niggas like Elvis, if we want to even really yeah, even take yeah, it back, yeah. like yeah, just, Willie Hutch used to do it all the time. Like he'll sell somebody a song and then and then sing it himself. Sing it yeah. on the radio. <laughs> That's the ultimate joke. Yeah. Big finesse. You can't Straight do up. that shit now. You get, oh nah, you get <laughs> suit like a motherfucker. Yeah, definitely copyright. Uh, yeah, copyright going crazy right now. Uh, DMCA's all that. Mm-hmm. Like DMCA's got that shit on lock. Definitely. <laughs> I'm honestly thankful. If they hear that them. snare, nigga. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you definitely got to be when, when when money's involved, you know? Yeah, it's it's, it's crazy how, like, some of just the stealing and shit, like, goes. Because um, a lot of people don't notice, but, like, producers, when we make, like, our sample packs and, like, shit like that, we post them, whatever. Things will straight up rip them, throw them on Reddit, all that. And if you don't DMCA, it's like... What can you do? You all SOL. Right. right. It's, a, it's a double-edged sword, though, because you might make a kit. It might get leaked. It might go on to be, like a legend amongst you know what i'm saying the community or whatever and then people will probably buy you shit afterward right but at some point you take an l for that a major l um have you taken any l's in that regard did you learn through through trials and tribulation or so i was uh um uh, back when i was in this producer collective we used to sell kits on the site mm-hmm. i was dropping in like two kits a month like whatever so the first thing i would do um sometimes is uh i do like little giveaways give it out to a couple people like whatever the fuck then we drop it officially the next thing we know like we getting texts in the group chat like oh bro they done leaked like every kit that came out this month or like whatever on reddit and then one of the dudes in there he was he was physically going to do like the dmcas himself and like talking to the people and shit like that it's so crazy turnaround time is fast though Mm -hmm. so um i definitely have learned from it what I have learned is you cannot stop pirating. Like you can't, it, yeah. You can't like it's gonna happen, like regardless. Um, even, you know, as somebody, you know what I'm saying, who knows about pirating and is well versed in that uh activity. Um <laughs> yeah, you can't stop you can't stop that shit. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So Yeah. 
I was trying to think. Yeah, it's really nothing you can do. But yeah, it ain't shit you could do, man. It's great. I, I, I'm gonna tell you what, and here's one of the main reasons: good artists create, great artists steal. When I heard that 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 quote, blew my fucking mind. Because when you think about it, everything, everything that is known for, you know what I mean, kind of took from something. Yeah, if it wasn't influenced or inspired, mm -hmm. nigga just straight up took it. Like, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? I watched, um, <laughs> uh, do y'all watch Disney Pixar movies at all? Y'all oh, I've, I've, I've seen every one. I haven't seen yeah. one of them. You seen Coco? Yeah. yeah what? I seen Coco. Okay, so. I watched Coco for the first time the other. Shit was crazy. Coco is like one of their best movies. Bro, that's what made me watch it. I, I, did, I had to hold back that thought to you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know, that, I bit, was, <laughs> that bit was on the edge. I say, nigga, you bet not. And the, the, the tear dried away. I was boo crying, bro. No cap. Over there, like... Cause Straight it, up. My Straight thing up. was, like... Um, IGN posted, like, the best, like, Disney Pixar movies of all time, whatever. Like, 25. They had cards at, like, 18. I was like... That's crazy. What is it? I was like, this is crazy. So, I check... I, I get down the list. Their list was terrible. I see Coco at number five. I'm like, really? Coco should have been number one. Yeah, most people consider Coco the best one. I would say Coco would be number one. <clears throat> Up should have been higher. Uh, the Good Dinosaur should have been higher. Oh, The Good Dinosaur is that's a sleeper, bro. These are all great movies that pull on your heartstrings, that give you a great story. You know what I'm saying? I agree. That make you feel like the Good Dinosaur fucked me up because the dinosaur ended up trying to keep bro from his family. Yeah. I was like, oh shit. You That's a, how they get you. You with a those. bad person? <laughs> <laughs> bro, Pixar be crazy with like the end game like plot twist. Like Coco at like, Coco was fucking me up because it was like, oh, he's like, oh, this is my great grandpa, whatever. I'm finna yeah. go pull up on him. He's like, actually, nah, I killed you, man. And stole his shit. Straight up. Just ran off with it. So it was just uh, it was a good movie. But it like it just ties into what we were just talking about. You know, every great artist steals. Um, De La Cruz was a thief. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, man. All right, so let's back it up a little bit, man. So where are you from exactly? That should have been like one of the first questions out of the gate, but fuck it. Talking about Coco <laughs> up out here. Yeah. Well, B, we got a side track, but I'm from <laughs> Jacksonville, Florida. Um, What's I, that? North side. I grew up on right. North side my whole life. Um, I live one, one all over the north side. <laughs> yeah, we, got, we got a competition. We got, yeah, we Where got you, you an ongoing. Yeah, I'm from the north side. Where you from? South side. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. South side superstar. You know what I'm saying? So I um, I stayed all over the north side. I stayed on like Dunn. Also stayed on like 45th, Moncrief. Um, that little nook over right. there by like rebound and shit. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of just going back and forth in there between my parents, like my grandparents. Um, then. Ended up moving to LA, lived out there for a couple of years, and moved back here. And I was down the South Side. That shit is different. Okay, it's it's literally day <laughs> and night from where like I was living at before. Right, you right, know what I right, mean? Right, like, yeah. right, so crazy. But. Two two questions on LA. What made you go out to LA, and how was LA versus Jacksonville? Um, which one you prefer? Also, okay, I went out to LA just because. Um, a friend of mine was like, yo, I'm about to move out of LA, about to get this crib or whatever. All the producers that was like in a collective, like we want to go out there and just live together and just, you know what I'm saying, work, do sessions and shit like that. You mind telling the name of the collective? Yeah, okay. it was Internet Money. Okay. Internet Money. Um, we were out there doing that for a while. And um, I learned a lot about LA. And the city the city's just hella fast. Like, I think living out there for, like, two and a half years honestly felt like five. Um, just because there's always something going on. Or, like, somebody's like, oh, I'll come to the studio. I was on some crazy shit. Going to, like, three sessions in a day type shit. Sleeping and then just getting back up and then doing it again. All right. Um, I think in comparison to Jacksonville, um, it's pros and cons to both. I think if you... If you have, I guess, like an artistic desire or a desire to work in like tech or something like that, I definitely think a place like L.A. is um, good for that just yeah. because they have like the infrastructure there, like off rip. Like as soon as you land, like you can kind of start networking and shit. The only downside is, though, it's hella scammers. A lot of people be calf about shit. Yeah. And um, you just got to like maneuver a certain way. Um, I think here, I think Jackson is still like a developing city. 
mm-hmm. on like a lot of um fronts and stuff like that but i think it has the potential to be like a like a hub like a miami like in atlanta right. like in la i just think it comes down to just um just the infrastructure here and just like who's in charge what's being built here and then like what the people that come from here that are already established in their fields like do to bring something back as well um because i know a lot of people as of late that have been blowing up here like they leave and they low-key can't like come back and do shit because of you know what i'm saying street shit or like shit like that yeah. um so that kind of makes it harder for um the city to develop obviously right so right. um as far as my preference though i don't know i'm undecided because there's stuff i love about jacks but there's stuff i hate about jacks there's shit about la i love and there's stuff about la i hate okay. traffic how long you been back two years two years okay. i came back here six months into the pandemic okay. yeah what brought you back well, when when I tell you LA shut down, bro, it was it was so bad to the point to where like we had a curfew. Yeah. I was we were going out or whatever just to the grocery store, coming back home. I'm talking like showering before you leave, taking your clothes off at the door, showering when you get back type shit. It was yeah. it was just so bad. And then um I came to a realization. I was like, I don't know how long this is going to go on. So it's like, if I'm not doing sessions or anything like that, there's no point in just like paying for this expensive ass apartment. Right. Right. I so I was, that. Yeah. So I said, I'll go back home. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. See what happened through the pandemic. I'll be able to work. I'll have all my equipment and stuff like that. And I can kind of just lock in um, for the most part. Cause honestly, I thought I was, I had FOMO for a while. I thought it was going to be bad when I left. Like, I thought hella shit was going to start happening, but you know, <laughs> it stayed dead, like, throughout the entire, no shows. If people were in the studios, it was, like, their personal stuff or, like, people they had already been working with. All right. So, no at that networking. Point, yeah, there wasn't any networking, and that's what was bumming me out because, like, right before the pandemic started, I was getting sessions with new people, like, every other day almost. Um, so, that was an adjustment for sure. Yeah, I noticed also like right when the pandemic hit, like a lot of people from LA, they either moved from, they either moved back to where they came from or they moved to like Austin or like Miami or some shit. Yeah, that was, uh, honestly, Texas is hype right now. Texas First, is booming. Yeah. Super crazy right now. Houston is going crazy. Not facts. One of my homies from here, um, Matt Sounds, he actually just moved out to Houston, I want to say like a year or so ago, maybe longer, but. He's been, he always tell me about it. He's like, bro, Houston late. You got to come out for a little bit, like come work and shit like that. Um, Texas has been on the come up for probably the last, like, I want to say like six or seven years, honestly. Man, Texas has been on the come up the last like 30 years. <laughs> 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 I mean, and I say that to say this. All right. So in my opinion, Texas is the only state, the only state in America where you can go platinum without being nationally syndicated yeah i mean it's the infrastructure there bro because like think about all the acts that come from texas ugk yep yep. um even modern ones like travis scott man you even if you go into their underground like their underground is is ridiculous you know what i mean and and again we're talking about dating back to the 90s dating back to uh early 2000s you know what i'm saying Um, absolutely yeah shout slim thug already platinum yeah. yeah, bro. And he, I'm not. Y'all like, know who my favorite is, Camilitary Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, one of my, um, one of my favorite artists right now is, uh, actually underground, like from Houston, low key. Uh, y'all ever heard of Heaven? Nah. Uh, nah. y'all should check, it's actually pretty late. Y'all should check him out. He was on, um, Don Tolliver's album. Okay. Um, uh, with Sofago, but yeah, nah, Houston, like, I don't know, bro. They on their own type of time. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like most big cities or like popping cities are like that. Like even Atlanta. I mean, we talk about Atlanta for like three hours, but right, you right, know what yeah. I'm saying? That goes without saying like how it's ran there. And I just um I don't know. I feel like I feel like yeah. here could like be something like that one Definitely. day. Definitely. I mean that's that's actually a good comparison because me and him, we used to be be out in Texas a lot around like 2011, 2012. Yeah. Where Jacksonville is at now, I see where like Houston and Austin was around that time. Mm-hmm. And now it's blown up. I see Jacksonville like in that spot, like right now. It's like 
we just steadily need building to start bringing like if we had a festival in Jacksonville, agree, yeah, That's, we would we would be good. We would be on the right track towards moving things like towards becoming a hub. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, come together day was 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 a cool thing, right? But come together day was a city thing. Like that yeah. was something for the city. We need something that attracts people from Atlanta. We need something that pulls people from Savannah, Orlando, Miami. Miami. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And makes them say like, yo, I gotta, I, I, I need to be at this festival. You know what I mean? When J. Cole threw the Dreamville. <clears throat> yeah, that was in his hometown. Right. You know what I right. mean? Like, and it, it just goes back to just like somebody just stepping up or like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Getting it together and just doing it. I think DJ Shab was doing a good job when he was doing the little festivals here on the north side. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. he just stopped doing them. Yeah, and see, I think things like that grow. You know what I mean? They yeah. they they definitely grow over time. You build the finances to where you can start to you know you build the reputation more than anything because that's what Jacksonville has a problem with. When we start to think about local events and 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 things that people host, uh, there's no security oftentimes. So when things do pop off, there's no one to handle the situation. You know what I mean? And then it's dead at that point because exactly. there's no there's no like sense of authority or whatever. And then people no will resolution. take it upon themselves to handle it and i mean like listen that's that's cool in some cases but i just feel like in professional settings like right in just, order for the city to grow yeah 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 you can't because then i mean look at all the clubs and stuff here bro you know what i'm saying a lot of stuff got shut down and see i'm glad that now like the club scene is starting to like rejuvenate itself you know what i mean yeah. they're starting to like kind of have a cleanse to where the bars are popping you see in a large gathering a mixed crowd uh a lot uh, you know on a regular basis to where nothing's going on you know i mean nothing nothing unsafe is happening you right. know what i mean um people are being cordial and all of that um once the city opens back up we have more clubs like Thinking back to early or even mid 2000s, you know what I'm saying, 2005 to 2010, let's say, you had a club on every side of town. Yeah, Christopher's on the west side. You had Aqua on beach. Uh, uh, Bolero's on beach. You had Seabirds. Come on, man. Yeah. You had um, Pure on Bay Meadows around the 2010 time. After those things got shut down, you know, Aqua's was still going for a little while. But uh, think about when we had Bourbon Street on on St. John's. Oh, you know wow. what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. Even the beaches always had a bar. Ocean Ocean Club. You got um, uh, Bricks now. Um, the problem is right now it's only the beach or Riverside. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's honestly one of those one or one of those options because like even like me and the homies and shit, like when I first moved back here, we'd be like, All right, let's go out. It was like we're going to the we're same going, exact Yeah. Spot. We either going to five points, King Street, or the fucking beach bars. Right. <laughs> so it's like after a while it's kind of just like okay this is cool but it's like it, it yeah it's the same thing you know what i'm saying like it's kind of stale we need the diversity again once we have that i'm telling you like i think jacksonville because at that time jacksonville was fun it, there was nowhere in the united states you couldn't travel and say you're from duval county and right. not have someone say oh shit you from jacks all right well let's talk you know what i mean like <laughs> it was a talking point like the city was lit the city was on fire, but yeah, like I say, I think that we are shifting back towards that culture. Yeah, definitely. I I think just this time, I think it's just a time thing, honestly. Right. And just with like even like the younger people here, I mean, even people younger than me, you know, what I'm saying just doing stuff and being active and just having like a vision, I guess, like a bigger vision. Like I think it'll it'll pick up over time for sure. So let me ask this. You say you've been back two years now. Have you uh, delved into the um, local scene music-wise? Like, do you, are you familiar with, you know, a lot of the local acts that are that are coming up now? Um, Aside from probably my friends that I work with, and then obviously you got, like, Seti and, like, Nardo. Right, right. Ace. Um, I fuck with Dumar, too. Dumar's lit. And, like, yeah, Spot yeah, of God yeah. and shit. Like, yeah. that's about it, really. We like <laughs> Dumar on Reese Yeah, we Reese. just interviewed him. Oh, he's goofy. Yeah, he's funny as fuck. I fuck with him, but um, I I follow the Duval promo pages and like I keep I just keep tabs on like right, the stuff right. they post and stuff. And like honestly, I be hearing like a lot of dope shit like out of the city. 
um one of my homies from high school his cousin raps um and he was showing me like a lot of his shit and i was like damn yeah he he keeps going like he'll be straight you know what i mean and um I like it overall, like when I'm hearing, even outside of like the rap stuff, like it's a lot of local bands um, that I fuck with. My friend Joel plays in a band called Pastel Palms. Okay. I think they're dope. Um, I work with him a lot. So yeah, it's pretty chill. Like I like it. Um, I just think people just got to like not be so like disjointed or whatever. And then I think as far as like the rap stuff goes, I just wish niggas would stop beefing and kind of just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know sure, I mean? for sure, for sure. I mean, that's, that's the main thing right now. Niggas need to grab hold of the opportunity. Like if, if we could kill the beef in the city, if we, if we could kill the beef, at least to where it's cordial, it ain't like niggas got a feature on records together and things like that. If we could just keep it to where like, that's not what the city is known for right now. I think that, um, Man, this would like this would definitely have a lot of eyes on it. I Everybody's agree. looking to sign someone from Jax, but they're looking to sign someone that's that's involved. Definitely, it was it was crazy because um, uh, when I was signing my label, my GM there, he was sending me like Young and A songs. He was like, "Yo, like who is this?" Yeah. I was like, <laughs> "I was like, bro, you're from the city," and which is oh shit, which is crazy to me because it's like. Yeah, this is like a white dude, like yeah, you know what I'm saying. I grew up in like California, and it's like the reach was just insane to me. Um, yeah, so it's just like there's shit going on here, like for sure. Yeah, um, shit. it's a lot of good music. It's just you know, like I say, everybody wants right now. The beef shit is hot, you know, since um, since that whole drill wave is really like grown, grown its and spread its wings now. Um. You know, Jacksonville definitely is a part of that, and it's got it's it's, it's you know a lot a lot a lot of attention on it. So yeah, for sure. I think I think um maybe some of the artists like will have a moment. It'll it might click. You know what I yeah. mean? Like a light bulb might go off or something like that. Right. Um, but that's just you know that's up to them. Yeah. And what they want to do with it long term, because I feel like a lot of times though for rap like. That, that it comes second, you know what I'm saying, for a lot of people, even music in general, you know what I'm saying? I feel like like art sometimes for people comes second aside from like whatever other shit they have going on, um, whether it's like their beef or like their personal demons and shit. All right. So. All right. So you the only artist that we've had so far that got like plaques and shit. So yeah, man. Let's get Tell into us that. About we, that. Yeah. We're 32 minutes in. We just yeah. now mentioning that. So. <laughs> Um, I got, I got my first platinum record and like number one, uh, rap album on billboard. Cause I got to work with Lil Nas X. Okay. Um, my homie business boy, uh, he's from Milwaukee, lives in LA now, whatever. Um, I've been friends with him for years. Like I've been friends with him so long. Like he used to send me stuff, uh, for me to work on. Like when I got off work at like 11 o'clock and um i would send it back to him and i ended up getting like some of my first bigger placements like with him um we actually the first time we got together i think was with roy woods um it's not out yet should be on his album though whenever he <coughs> decides to drop but um yeah so when i moved to la we started linking up and just like session and stuff like that because that's where he lived at so he texted me like one Saturday, he sent me a screenshot. It was a schedule. It said like, oh, Lil Nas X at Chalice, like noon or whatever. And I was like, oh shit, like that's lit. You know what I'm saying? Like I thought he was just sitting there just to be like, yo, I got this going on. But he was like, bro, just pull up to the studio. And I was like, oh shit. It's yeah. soon, like as soon as he said that, I already knew like it was up. Because yeah. when I tell you like the hype for, well, I mean, we saw it. You know what I'm saying? Like the hype for Lil Nas X as an artist like it was just so crazy at the time um just because of what was going on so yeah i go in uh i pull up or whatever me and biz picked about like we picked like five beats a piece like to play him or whatever and uh he didn't like any of them we got to like our six beat Damn. and then he was like yo actually y'all take the beginning of this and like make a beat out of it and then we looked at each other. We were like, oh, shit, okay. Like, we're cooking on from scratch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I could tell with him, like, he was in... Like, we caught him at a time where, like, he 
was really settling into like being an artist, like figuring out what his process was and stuff like that. Right. And I think like he liked to make songs from scratch or yeah, whatever, instead of just getting yeah. like a beat like straight up. Right. So he was kind of coaching us. He was like, yo, like I want the drums like this, like I'm going to do this or whatever. And then, yeah, bro, made it, ended up being his personal favorite song on his on the first EP he put out. And um, yeah, time passed, record went platinum. Low key, it was already platinum though, cause I think the song, I think Old Town Road was like, I want to say, I think by the time the project it came out, it might have been like five or six times platinum, like the song by itself. Yeah. So when your project, so you, that's what you got to work on, Old Town Road. No, not that song. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I, I was gonna I say. I wish. <laughs> I was gonna say, nigga. <laughs> nah, nah, that was uh, Kia. I can't think of his name. I don't remember his name. But um, I think it was Keo. Yeah, Keo is the name. I'm pretty sure. But nah, um, it's a song called "Kick It." I think it's like okay. the like fifth or sixth song on there. But um, nah, it's an interesting track for sure. One of probably one of the most interesting beats I've made, just because like it was um, it sounds like a lot of people like worked on it. You know what I mean? We did it. We made it. He was like, "Yo, we want to get somebody to come in and play strings on it." So um, our boy Johan. Uh, did some shit on there and then boom, and it was just done. So that was cool. Very life changing event. Um, definitely opened up a lot of doors for me, both as a producer and an artist. Um, but like for I think for some people, shit like that is like the top of the hill, the top of the mountain. But as soon as I got you know that, I realized that happened. I was like, okay, cool. I gotta capitalize. Like, yeah, I gotta start like I, figuring I out. More, yeah. yeah. Like, I want to get more sessions with people. I want to do more records with people. I want to work with more big artists. I want to go develop artists, you know what I'm saying, while I'm doing, like, my own artist development. So the last couple of years, like, since that happened, it's just been like that. Um, Just sending records out. Like, bro, I've sent records to so many people, gotten stuff back. Some of it came out. Some of it won't come out. Like, it, it's kind of crazy. Right, right. So... So how did that go when you send a beat to somebody and it just doesn't come out? So do you you can't get that beat to anybody else? Or I mean, just... you can because it's like the <clears throat> record's not gonna come out. Oh, like okay. you know, you like you know when a record's not gonna come out or not low key. Sometimes it's spoken, sometimes it's unspoken. Right. I remember I sent, I worked on an artist album. Um, it was like fourth quarter shit. So I was in the studio with my boy uh, Kyle for like two three days just cranking beats out because i was like i really like this artist i need to be on this album um so i find out it's like oh bro we got like three songs on there i'm like okay bet two days later i get a text he like bro he changed the whole track list he's like we're not on there i was like okay you know what i mean ended up ended up getting a placement with him no later and it's out so that's cool right right. um so it's like it producing is kind of a gamble you know what i'm saying and it's just you just gotta keep taking shots. You gotta keep making beats. You gotta keep sending beats. You gotta keep hitting up producers to collab with and make sure right. they're sending it out. You're sending it out. Your AR, if you have one, is sending it out. Your manager is like tapping it with you. Or like, you know what I'm saying? Like keeping you on your toes. So have you ever worked with an artist that that wasn't signed or didn't have a like wasn't a, a known act, let's say, you know? Oh what yeah. I mean? And uh Tell us about that process. I mean, it's pretty chill. Um, I think I think it comes with its own set of BS though, because like, there's times where like you'll work with an artist, they're unsigned or whatever, and like they're dope. You know what I'm saying? You enjoy it, you like it. But then it's like other times where like people will kind of just try to bullshit you because they right. might manage like a bigger artist, right? And they say, okay, cool, I got this smaller artist. Like you develop my smaller artist or whatever, I might put you in with my bigger artist. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's so political. Like, you got to, like, do a lot of, like, just got to do a lot of funny shit sometimes, bro. And I, I just, I typically don't like to deal with some of that stuff. Um, So I go by the music solely. Um, if if my, it's a good record. Yeah, yeah. Like, whatever, let's do it. Or if my a r sends me someone, um, my NR send me people all the time. They're like, yo, like we think this person is dope. Like, do you like them? Do you want to work with them? Whatever. I typically don't turn down like a session or like sending a folder out. Cause like you literally never know. Yeah, you never know. You might be working with the next big star. On oh, God. Up, like, up. 
Now, if you heard, if you hear, have you ever heard a record that you was like, "Yo, this is this this got something"? Yeah, definitely. I I have a I have a bunch of stuff like with like like I don't want to say lower tier artists because I feel like that's disrespectful. But like but, artists I mean, that on the come up, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Artists that are like on the come up, um, that are like really great records. Um, I was listening to one earlier actually. Uh, I met someone last summer. Um, I really was trying to just like produce her record for her, but she played me one because I was just trying to get a vibe of like what she was on, so I could like have an idea when I started making beats for her. She played me one, and I was like, "Yo, leave an open on it." Actually, I'll get on it. And then, you know, we ended up doing it. And I listened back to today for the first time in like maybe like two, three months. And I was like, damn, this is like one of them ones. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like I said, I always go off talent and like just the music. Like if you're good, bro, I don't care like how many followers you got. I don't care if you have budget. I don't care if you don't have budget. Because I'm an artist too at the same time. So it's like when I like before I got my, you know, first experience with a label, um, I got to meet and like work with um a lot of like people who some people would consider to be like super fucking big, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like uh the first song I ever got to put out was um uh at least his boy band was by um Side Piece, one of Juice World's producers. You know what I mean? And granted we all kind of came up together and stuff like that. Like we were all friends and shit, but from the perspective like on the outside that's like a really big thing and it's just like that's my homie you know what i'm saying like he liked what i did on it so he, you know he was like yeah, yeah bro yeah, go yeah, crazy yeah, he it. yeah yeah so to me it's like the same thing um because like when i yeah like just when i first started putting music out you know certain people just looked at it and they were like yeah bro let's do it like let's work i don't really care no no so you gotta i gotta you gotta pay that shit forward you know what i mean understand like that somebody uh somebody's come up you know what I'm saying? If you get to be a part of it, that's a blessing. For sure. Especially if y'all get the record, you know, together, that's the one for them. You know what I mean? Like, that's special. That doesn't happen, like, for everybody. Right. Yeah, and I, I'm assuming it doesn't even have to get a plaque as long as it's, like, somebody favorite, the people fuck with it. Straight up. That's, honestly, that's a W for me. A W for me is a song coming out at this point. <laughs> yeah. One of one of the craziest beats I made and one of the craziest placements I got with it is just going to sit in my notes forever, and that shit drives me so crazy. Yeah, yeah, it, it's so fucked. I'll show it to y'all like off cam, but yeah, yeah, yeah bro, that shit sure. crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, all right. So your name, Boy Band. How did you come up with that? Um, I had two names before this one. Originally, it was Alone in a Boy Band, right? Well, Alone in a Boy Band is just the handle. Okay, it's just okay, literally okay, just okay. to handle okay. everything. So it's yeah, like a project. Yeah, Loner Boy Band is a project. Okay, because that's that's how I like uh, somebody put me on to you ye- like a few years. Yeah, ago. what was your old name? Because I could have sworn I think you had like a SoundCloud and you had followed a podcast page like a long ass time ago. It was probably the Kuntosh SoundCloud. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it. Yeah, um, that was that was. I mean, that was a fun ass time, bro. I was just chilling, like making like synth wave and just kind of just fucking around, like. Making what I wanted to because I based the whole moniker around just like the 80s aesthetic. All right. Um, because that's just what I wanted to do. But I made um, the song I was just talking about that I did with Side Piece. I made that record and um, I was talking to Taz, that's Taylor. And we were like, yo, like, let's just rebrand it. You know what I'm saying? So we were texting back and forth trying to come up with a name. And then we came to Boy Band. And then to me, I was like, oh, it's actually kind of lit because, you know, Boy Band five piece group whatever everybody got their different personalities got their vibes and shit and i thought it applied to me because like i just do so many different things you know artist producer engineer graphic designer creative director like you know what i mean it's it's all encompassing and i don't know it's kind of cool some people think it's cool some people be like what's your real name i don't necessarily want to call you that i'm like that's fine right um (laughs) you're finna about boy man yeah i'm like why i I, I don't get that one but I don't, I don't get it not either, like, bro. Yeah, It'd be throwing I mean, me off. I'd be like, <clears throat> not like we're calling you delicious or something. Right, right. Yeah, right, you're right. <laughs> and, uh, uh, <laughs> or a sweetness from damn roll bounce. You yeah, know? bro. <laughs> bro I always bro. question that shit. Like, yo, why did they call this nigga sweetness? <laughs> right. There's so many names I could say that are probably worse than boy, but I'm not finna get into that though. That's a whole different <laughs> straight up. Whole straight different up. can of worms. But 
Yeah. Yeah, nah, I don't know. Some people be acting weird about it. I'm like, fine. Nah, honestly, I think that's that's really dope for like, you know, the music you make and whatnot. Like I, I think it fits perfect. Like I thought it was genius when I heard it. Yeah. Especially like as <laughs> especially as alone in a boy band. I was like, oh man, this nigga's on to something. You yeah, know that what I'm shit. <laughs> alone in a boy band was like that was going to be the name for everything, but I was like, I feel like the whole lowercase one word thing shit right. is just gonna like get played out after a while. I hear that. Um so I was like, let's just go with just boy band and then alone in a boy band could just be the monocron and everything. Gotcha. Because at the end of the day, like I am not. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. My boy band, I'm by myself. Straight up. <laughs> so it just it uh it clicks. I'm I'm I love it. I know like I think I feel some type of way about it sometimes just because some people are just like I think it's more so because they're taken aback by like somebody with one person would call themselves that yeah. call themselves that. So, but question for everybody: top five boy bands. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Damn, that's a really good one. Wait, bro. can okay? So can I? He dropped that bit on the dumb. I ain't gonna too. lie, my list might have three like '90s R and B. Like, oh, no. let's go, let's it. go. Now keep in mind, Jackson Five is a boy band. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So we are gonna start. We are gonna start there. Jackson Five gotta go number one. Jackson Five. Can we throw Temptations on there? Are we counting Temptations as a boy band? Would they be a all right? So are we? Uh, is 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 an R and B group different than a boy band? No, they are boy. They are, they are boy. Jodeci band. Okay. is a boy band. Okay, Drill is a boy band. Okay, okay. Yeah. So well, then I think you yeah. gotta go Temptations. Boys to Men is a boy band. Boys to Men is a boy band. That's I think on my you list. gotta go Temptations. Okay, cool. Okay, Temptations. Boys to Men, Jodeci. Um, they got no in sync in it. See, I was. I'm trying to. I'm trying. To, I, I gotta mean, pick one. If we go in, if we go in boy bands, then he not. He not. He not. Okay. I'm. Right. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, fuck with Insane. I fuck with Backstreet Boys. I love Straight the whole up. early 2000s. Right. Like shit. It's just, bro. Boys, the men and Joe Jodeci. You know what I'm saying? And you, bro, you doing Jackson Five? Nah, it's like, bro. I'm gonna say this. Boys to men. I. They got hits. Yeah. Okay. But I take them out. Who you who you swapping then? I can respect it depending on who it is. See, I mean for real, like there are a few that I think you could go to shy lights over boy. Uh, oh, 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 oh wow! Over over boys to men, and and I say this only because this Jodeci has hits. But outside of that, like Jodeci ain't the group. Like that I'm goes, a, that goes to war. We was talking about uh, what are you talking about? Blake one eighty two. Yeah, Jodeci yeah. run wasn't really that long. It wasn't yeah. long at all, man. So Can I do my list real quick. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got new kids on the block. Okay. B two K. Ah. In sync, Backstreet Boys, Jackson Five. Damn, that's a solid list. I I ain't even mean to count out B two K like that. I like B two K. B two K yeah, was a crazy, crazy run. run. Can I can I throw an Isley they Brothers? They had it on lock. Yeah, can I throw an Isley Brothers. That's a good one, Isley Brothers. Yeah. All right, so if we doing that, I'm gonna go Jackson Five, the Isley Brothers. I'm gonna go. I would I'm, rather you go Isley Brothers than Shy Lights. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah easily, easily, easily. I was just saying a group that came quickly to and mind. It's crazy, Isley Brothers still relevant like a motherfucker, bro. Yeah, <laughs> like let them drop an album. Honestly, I would I take Isley Brothers album in 2022. Uh, nigga, oh, I'll take, sure. take them niggas uh doing sign language on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just like, honestly, I I'll, I'll, I'll take the uh the reference tracks. They ain't long, gotta have no words. I take them niggas mumbling on it. Straight up. That's what God, I'm saying. Like, as long as they don't um do that damn Smokey Robinson route. Oh yeah, yeah. What's Smokey Robinson? Gang banging. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> yeah, when he was rapping for a little I bit. I forgot that happened, bro. <laughs> Selling Coke. Bruh. Smoking dope, <laughs> whatever he was saying on that shit. My homie showed me that shit. I didn't. He, he was telling me about it. I was like, "That's not real, bro. That's not smoky, bro. That's, he must have been smoking dope." I think but, he he had to get a bag for that. Man, bro. he must have. He must have been behind on his taxes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could think. He man. said, "How like, I'm gonna get this check real quick? Let me IRS on me. I gotta get it right." <laughs> I think he said he said the black community back though like a couple years. 
Bruh. That was that was insane, bro. It's le- it, listen, it's levels to some of that, but like that was. And then the time that it came out, yeah, the quality did not match. It was like. Damn, what y'all went to the thrift store to shoot this <laughs> shit? <laughs> they said, look, we got Smokey Robinson. We got to give it a vintage aesthetic. Like, Bruh, <laughs> like them niggas went to the damn, to one of them damn old PBS sets and said, let's. That let's. might be one of them things where like Smokey did it. He forgot about it. And the internet kind of just like dug it up. I could, he was like, damn, I happen. wish that shit didn't happen. I could believe that. He probably recorded that shit in 76. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably a demo. Honestly, he probably had the demo, sold it to him. He said, look, I need this bag real quick. Let me just, y'all can hide this. Do whatever y'all want. Damn. Paid him extra for the video appearance. Boom. Taxes paid. <laughs> y'all just got to retwist my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I fuck with that, but y'all came up with some good lists for top five boy bands. I fuck with both. Yeah, of y'all. I mean, appreciate that because I think there's a few that I could, you know, put up there, man. Like, damn, bro. But when I think boy band, bro, you think in sync, in sync, in sync, Backstreet Boys, because, nah, bro, that was a legit duel. Yeah, bro, yeah. that shit was that era was crazy. Like, it was like, yo, are you in sync or you Backstreet? Backstreet boy? Yeah, that's war. Like, yeah, straight up. What side y'all picking? I'm on NSYNC. So. NSYNC. Likewise, yeah. likewise. Because Backstreet Boys only had like two or three you songs. Know. But I'm going to tell you what. They had a lot. Put it this way. My bad. I'm in sync. Went over in sync. I'm in sync, but out of the two, Backstreet Boys got my favorite song where I wanted that with. Bruh, I was just about to say. I feel that's like you, one of the best songs they were. With. They were singing black records. Yeah. They were Somebody black was right. I was just about them. to say, bro. I'm pretty sure. I think. Cause if you if you gave I want it that way to, uh, yeah, you gave it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is smash, huh? That shit would have went up, bro. <laughs> that shit, bro. That shit would have been in the Smithsonian. Like that's one of them records. Like no matter who wrote that shit, it's yeah, it's going up in the go It would have been a statue of them up. niggas somewhere. You know what I'm saying? I want it that way. Like, come on, man. Nah, it was. I some... used to be in the roller rink around that time. So, oh wow, yeah, yeah. yeah. How old are you? I'm 31. So. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. That make see. I, I think a lot. Said it like I'm old. Nah, 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 nah. nah. <laughs> I was <laughs> <Roll over here. laughs> Nah, I got a grasp on like just the sense of time because like obviously when nigga like me was listening to Backstreet Boys, I'm 24. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, I'm in the back you. seat in the car, like whatever. <laughs> so it's like he was like, you're the scared me. I'm like, wait, yeah, like. He he said he was out in these streets when they were Yeah, playing. straight up, bro. Straight like you was, up. You know what I'm saying? Shit was, was lit. lit. Yeah, <laughs> hey, look. When that shit came on, bro, they used to dim the lights. Like, bro, that shit had its own mood, nigga. <laughs> That's crazy. They I, dimmed the lights. They had the strobes going and shit. And if you couldn't skate, you knew to, like, either graduate, get out the way. move to the center, or get your ass off the rink. Some songs that came out, like, I wish I was, like, this age for because it's like damn the club was probably actually like lit you know what right, i'm saying just because right. production style was a certain way and shit like you know something off the top of your head yeah i wish i was uh i wish i was 24 when um promiscuous and like say oh, it right was on the radio man. i was in the skating rink though when all songs were out yeah yeah so it was like a yeah you it get was a little mix yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah. good enough but it's just like damn if i was older like Man, Should probably girl, lit. You know I what I mean? Was pushing up on something, yeah. <laughs> probably actually be dead to hit the club versus just kind of just. Yeah, that's like right when we graduate from high school. Straight yeah. up, yeah. straight up. And Timberland went on a, a short little run around that time. Nah, he bro, had, he yeah. it, yeah. it, 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 he it stayed on the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. always. This is my favorite producer, actually. But I mean, like as far as the music he was making, he had linked up with Drake shortly after that with um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that uh, say, say something. something? Yeah. Oh my god, one of Drake's god. best. Oh my god, actually. Oh my god, yeah, he both of them floated. went crazy. Facts. They did another song together too. Um, it was Timberland, Jay Z, and Drake. Mm. Um, it was called Know About Me. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it was Know About Me. It came out. I don't know if I heard that one. Take Care era, I want to say. You've had to hear that shit. I might have. You know my memory. You bro. probably don't know about a name, but. Yeah. You probably you, heard it, yeah. If you, the song the song play, you'd be like, yeah, I've heard this shit. Gotcha. It was fucking stupid. For my memory, man, that bit. It happens, bro. I feel you. It happens, You man. think a nigga got Alzheimer's. <laughs> 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 like. 
We got to get you checked, bro. Hey, bro. A couple years, man, you know. No. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about uh, internet money. Like, how you got cool with them? Like, how did that come about? Um, I met Taz, like, many moons ago. Like, I, I, was, I was 14. I just started <clears> making beats. Uh, we linked up on Twitter. Um, and we kind of would just... I pulled up on him. We just started working together and shit. He just started teaching me shit, like, just about selling beats and just how that shit went. And, um, yeah, that's how I went, bro. Like, a lot of, um, definitely a lot of what I've done, um, you know, comes from, like, shit I learned from him and shit I got to do with him for sure, just as far as just learning how to, like, move as a producer. Right. Um, just because it was a time, bro, like, like, producers really weren't getting, like, a certain amount of respect, you know what I'm saying? And like, he was just one of the ones that were really fighting for that shit for the community yeah. in general. It was like him, Johnny Giuliano, Superstar O, right. like a lot of dudes just making beats and selling them on SoundClick and shit like mm-hmm. that. And um, he was like, yo, I'm gonna start this collective, I'm gonna start this group up, like you wanna join? And um, he put me in a group chat, like with everybody, just, you know, like later on. And then um, the yeah, rest is kind of just history, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, and I know it was a couple of dope producers um, that that joined Gary Harvey, um, Zach. Yeah, um, uh, bro, it's, they have so many members at this point. Like, yeah, it's yeah. actually pretty <laughs> fucking crazy. I remember it really was just me, Nick, DT, True, Casey, Trent, Joel's, um, Roy, obviously Taz. Um, that was really it for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. And then like the group just started expanding and like branching out and stuff like that. And then it became like a thing. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Something major. Yeah. Yeah. The vision, the vision uh, Taz had for it, like always was to be that big. You know yeah. what I mean? Ultimately, like, you know what I'm saying? That's what it is now. Right. Right. So shout out to that. Yeah, for sure. All right. So what you working on right now, man, as far as music? Got any projects coming up? Um, you, know, you dropped like two songs recently, two singles. Yeah, did you like them? Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. Which was your favorite? Uh, the um, first one, I forget the name of it now. Hold on. Yeah, I'm not good with names. You're good. Either, good. I think it was Vader. I was just about to say, I ain't want to say Darth Vader nah, they, and be wrong because I be watching a lot of Star Wars and nah, shit. Same, 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 same. But, and we got that damn post over there, so I ain't want to be like, yeah, it was Darth Vader. Poster. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that shit's so, hard. Yeah. Hard. Yeah, I'm fucking more. Uh, how you pronounce that shit? Sanrio? Sanrio? Yeah. Okay, okay. I made, I made both of them, and I was like, damn, like, I don't want to drop them. Like, <clears throat> I don't want to wait to drop them because I liked them so much. So I was like, oh, fuck it. Let's just do a little double double single. Right. You know what I mean? I was uh-huh. I had a uh, Fooly Cooley on repeat today. Nice. <laughs> yeah, fuck with that heavy. The yeah. songs, uh, it just got placed in a movie. Oh, Word. Really? What movie? Yeah, uh, it's called Cha- Yeah, it's called Cha Cha Real Smooth. Okay. Um, it's gonna be on Apple TV. It has um Dakota Johnson in it. Uh, and you all know who that is? Nah, not no. offhand. It's Fifty Shades of Gray. Okay. Oh, okay. Didn't see that. I just know. It. <laughs> <laughs> a, I know it exists. Movie. You ain't yeah, yeah, it's a freaky movie. You ain't miss out. <laughs> Bro, that shit was crazy. I don't know if I can even tell this story on a podcast. It's a shit. It's on you. Man, this <laughs> podcast, so you know <laughs> while I'm here, um a movie came out when I was in high school in my senior year. We went to the theater with the homies, whatever. Saw the movie. Bro, this dude was getting head like <laughs> At like on our row, like I look over, what? I'm like, I'm like, bro, this movie theater? not even like that crazy, <laughs> like. But it, <laughs> he said, like, "Fuck man, it, I'm gonna, yeah. make, I'm gonna make it crazy." <laughs> <laughs> he said, "This shit too tame. Let me get some head real quick." Yeah, for real insanity. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, um, I haven't seen it yet. But they name dropped the song in the movie. Um, the movie is about um. This mother and her child is autistic, mm. and um, they it's like a rom com type deal from what I'm from what I was hearing about it, and um, you know they meet this guy, whatever they become a family at the end. Ultimately, I'm sure, but they're at like a bar mitzvah, and uh, the kids like all oh, this music sucks or whatever, and then it's like all oh, my favorite song is Fooly Cooly by Boy Man. I read the script, but I haven't seen it yet. It's just probably gonna like hit for me in a different way. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it's like damn, like 
boy band exists in like the canon of like you know what I'm saying? Like a universe. I don't know. To me, shit like that is cool. Yeah, nah, yeah. that's amazing. So man. that mean either the, the directors or the writers just fuck with your music heavy. Yeah. They just had to mention you. That Which is insane because to me, because I don't know, music supervisors don't like, I don't know if they work in tandem with the writers and directors or whatever. So to the fact that like, yeah, it was in the script was kind of crazy. Yeah, that's dope. Um, that's amazing, actually. Yeah. That's really, hey, man, look. Hang your hat on that. I, be you know? that <laughs> hey, look, I, I, I watched the movie. I clipped that little part. Like, hey. Oh, I'm already. I'm out here. Yeah, I'm sure. making that, make that bitch an NFT. I had <laughs> a bitch on a t shirt. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Fooly Cooly would be everything till my next one. You know? Oh, my God. <laughs> once that movie come out, that song going to blow up even more. Yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. Because it's like, it's one thing to be in a movie, but like, they say your shit in the movie. It's almost like. A different recognition, man. That's like real recognition. That's that's somebody saying, "Yo, yeah, that shit don't happen for everybody." So Straight up, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't happen for a, 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 if totally. anybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's mega stars. They ain't got their music getting well mentioned in a movie. Straight yeah, up. it's just like to the background. So it's like it's a it's it's cool. I'm hype. You know what I'm saying? To see it, and it's yeah. like I'm hyped to see kind of what happened or what might happen, like from that type of thing. Um, as far as what I'm working on though, I actually have two EPs right now. Um, I have one, it is a fully like pop punk alternative project with the guitars from Good Charlotte, Billy Martin. Um, oh, wow. we produced the whole thing together. Um, Good Charlotte, another good band, huh? Yeah, nah, they on point, bro. They got classics. Um, shout out to them, bro. They've been showing love like for the longest. Like, Billy was one of the first people. Like that was like yo, like boy man's lit. Like I'm trying to fuck with it. You know what I'm That's saying? What's like, up. We um my intent was to collab with him as a producer first, but I ended up hearing uh the guitar that ended up being my song Death Note and I was like, Oh yeah, let's you know, let's do it. He was like, Yeah, let's put it out, whatever. Um so that was cool. Um and then I have another project I'm working on called Less Is More. Um it's a five song EP executive produced by me. Um, I put together like a lot of the records and stuff with like my homies. They sent me their guitars and I just started getting it together. Um, I'm working on shooting the first video for the first single for it. Um, I'll play all the record though okay. um, after, but, um, I'm excited for it just cause it's, it's a big step forward for me, like, uh, vocally. Cause I started just doing like more shit with my voice, like as far as like, my inflections and just like my performances in general and just like trying to capture more of like that feeling you know what i mean like i feel like now um as an artist like i want to just every line i say like i just wanted to be felt you know right, like i want right. somebody to be like damn like you know what i mean like the same feeling i get when i listen to you know like paramore or, like lincoln park or like whatever the fuck right um and i'm just doing a lot of artist development and producing stuff right now I'm working on a um, sample pack for Timbaland site Beat Club. Um, they just launched, and um, they have like a VIP program or whatever they got. They hit up, I think, 500 producers that they scouted out, and they said, "Yo, we're gonna make out VIPs. We're gonna y'all are gonna be like the beta for this." And they give out opportunities for producers to send stuff for like sync and placements and stuff like that. Okay. And um, about to do a deal with them so I can do like samples and stuff for their website. So I'm hyped about that too. That's yeah, that'll be really big. So it's a lot of a lot of moving parts and stuff right now. Um I'm just I'm just trying to keep making dope shit, bro. Like it, it that's it. <laughs> the bottom yeah. line. Like I just want to keep making good stuff because I think the foundation I've been working on the last two years with my last two projects and stuff like that is very solid. And um I can't really say that for the last two monikers I worked under because I hit like a ceiling and I hit like a wall because um I was just like I don't know if I really want to like just be on this type of time no more you know what I mean yeah but now with like boy band brands established people get it obviously talking to y'all too All right so like yeah I just want to keep going that's what's up Joe you had any more questions nah man hey you performing for us today I was not prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> you put him on the spot. You ain't got to perform today. You come back if you. I'll come yeah. back. I'll come, come back. back. I definitely. Come yeah, back, yeah, yeah. I'll come, come on back. back for us, man. I'm about to go. I'm finna go write like a 32 bar. I'm gonna memorize and I'll be like, yo, just throw a beat on. 
<laughs> it's out with the freestyle. <laughs> I heard that, man. But yeah, we we appreciate you, man. I'll let you plug all your shit. This has been one of my favorite ones so far. Yeah, definitely, for man. sure, man. Got a lot of insight like, on you. Yeah, yeah, man. Now y'all are y'all are cool. Amp, I've been I didn't followed you on like two different Twitter accounts. Like I lost my role, <laughs> but like nigga, you were funny as fuck. Oh, appreciate that. <laughs> no, man. bro. Like <laughs> <laughs> I used to get on Twitter. I'd be like, yo, I've been dude. telling this nigga that shit since <laughs> I know. Matt, like, appreciate legit that, man. Mad, man. <laughs> But um, yeah, I'm Boy Van. Uh, you can follow me on everything. Alone in a Boy Van. My Spotify is Boy Van. Um, go check out my song Fully Cooly. It's on all streaming platforms. And I think, yeah, I think that's it. All right. So once again, man, I probably said it a million times. Appreciate you coming on, coming out here. Definitely. Your ambiance in the back. Oh, of yeah. course. You know, got the vibes. Got the shout out the vibes. Yeah, got mm. studio audience going on, man. <laughs> Salute to them. <laughs> but I told I told everybody they were like, yo, like I wanna go. I'm like, okay. Like, uh, about, like you know what I'm saying? It. Nah, I love it. I love having um, you know, having a gang come with me, bro. Like it's it's cool. Yeah, good vibes. Sure. I feel like I'm at the best when I got a uh, people watching. So. No, for yeah. real. It, it, it you makes gotta you gotta be on your toes. Yeah, you yeah. Gotta your shit. <laughs> you gotta you gotta perform. Mind your P's and Q's. Definitely. All right. So with all that said, we out. out.